Okay, that is exactly what I was hoping for. What the heck? That kind of stopped me in my tracks right there. Oh my gosh. I think we just found a proof we penny. Look at that. A second Indian head coming out. No way. Guys, we got silver. Are you kidding me? One of the best date reveals by far, I think, on the channel. Three, two, one. All of this and more coming up. All right, guys, here's the deal. About a year ago, I put out a video where I searched through an entire $25 box of pennies where not a single coin in the box was later than 1982. That's right, every single coin in this box was a copper coin. Now, obviously, this is not your average box of pennies. This box was sent to me by a really awesome fan by the name of David. He sent me two of these boxes, and we've only gone through one so far. Unfortunately, my brother Kevin, who I really want to do that box with, lives kind of far away from me, and our schedules haven't lined up yet, so we haven't gotten the chance to do it just yet. How However, to tide me over, David decided to send another 10 rolls from the exact same collection dump, and that's what I have in this package right here. So without any further ado, let's crack this bad boy open and see what we can find. So here is our package. It's small, but it's got some weight to it. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, we are in, and the first thing I see is this nice little note that David left us. So we'll go ahead and read that. It says, Ryan. Good luck while hunting through these rolls. Hope you find some nice coins, David. All right, thank you, David, so much. I really appreciate this. After getting through all that packaging, this is what we have. Two packs of five. Very nicely packed, by the way. There we are. Look at those rolls. And look at this, guys. I, this, I remember this from last time. They have these markings on them. They're not entirely accurate, but they are definitely cool. And these rolls are super old. That one's marked 64. This one's marked 44, 74. 52D. And now for the second half. There we are. Look at that. More marked rolls. That one says 42, it looks like. 52D once again. And this one's 56D. Oh my gosh, guys. These are definitely exciting. Hopefully we can find an Indian head penny like we did last time. All right, guys, so I decided to organize them by year, and you can actually see a pretty clear distinction here. Brown rolls on the left, those are probably what he put the wheat pennies into, and then on the right here, uh, would be the memorial sense, but it only goes up to 77. Like I said earlier, nothing in here is going to be newer than 1982, which is when they stopped making copper coins. Of course, I think we're going to just go from left to right, starting with the oldest roll that we have, or at least is oldest marked. This one looks like 1942. And look at that, North Jersey National Bank, Abbott Coin Counter, Greenwich, Greenwich, and then it's cut off there at the end. But anyways, guys, let's just get into this and see what we are going to get. Okay, right off the bat, what do we have there on the end? It looks like a 1964. So these aren't properly marked. I'm gonna to try to preserve these rolls as best I can. This tape is super brittle. You can see that that's been on there for quite a while and it's not really sticky anymore. But uh, at least we are able to preserve the roll in that way because these, these are vintage rolls, guys. So, all right, what do we got on that end in 1976? So, like I said, these are just, they're basically pre-1982, but look at that, right off the bat, we see a wheat penny, another wheat penny right there. Are we gonna see any Indian heads pop out? I see more wheats coming out, some nice looking 60s coins as well. Oh my gosh, guys, I missed these rolls. These rolls are amazing. Look at that, what the heck? Okay, so we already have an old foreign coin coming out. And this one's from Turkey from 1949. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. One Kurus, I'll put up on the screen a uh, translation from uh, USD to uh, that currency and see if we can figure out a value on that uh, post-production. But that is the first find right there. This looks like a super old wheat scent right here. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's got that wood grain finish to it as well. I'm pretty sure you only get that in the early years. Okay, guys, let's flip this over and see what we got. Three, two, one. Yes, that is correct. 1921, San Francisco. Oh my gosh, guys, that is amazing. Really difficult to get a S mint mark or even a D mint mark for that matter on those older wheat pennies and we just got one right off the bat. I'll have to flip the placemat over to see if that makes it into our low mintage range and a wood grain finish nonetheless. These are one of my absolute favorite coins to find. Very happy with that. Let's see what else we got. Of course, just a few uh, coins later here, we have another wheat penny coming out with a little piece of hair or something on it. Let's flip that one over to see what we got. All right, so that's a 1956, so that's just gonna be a more common uh, wheat penny right there. There's a 51 Denver right there, which is gonna be another wheaty. 
think right under that is another one. Yeah, look at that. This one looks like it could be older as well. Let's flip it over and see what we got for a date. Okay, 1942. So guys, basically what you're looking for with wheat pennies, obviously I keep any wheat penny, but uh, what's really nice to see is a pre-1940s. I think this is gonna be another one right here. This looks like it could be a 20s or maybe even in the teens. Let's flip this over here in three, two, one. Oh, very nice, 1920 on the dot. So not as nice as that 21S we got a little bit earlier, but still a nice, older wheat penny there's a 57 denver those really don't end up being super interesting in this type of uh environment because they are everywhere 1951 denver right there we got a 58d just a couple coins away oh my gosh how many wheats are we going to end up with on this very first roll let's take a look here so we got more 60s coins coming out there's a 1951 right there that's another wheat penny 64 really nice nice uh, red 63 Denver right there. This is a 1950, look, three wheats in a row, 50, 56. This one right here is going to be a 44. That's actually one of the more common wheat pennies, but still gonna pull it out, of course. There is a 56 Denver, so just a whole bunch of common ones here. Uh, obviously, we're gonna be on the lookout for those pre-40s ones in this type of box. I'm not even sure if it's worth mentioning all the, the uh, dates, 53 Denver, 45. Couple more Lincolns there. There's a 50, is that a 50 S? Oh, it is, very nice. Love to see those estimate marks come out whenever uh, we can. This one looks like it could be maybe a little older. Oh, nice, so yeah, 37 right there. I'm gonna keep the pre 40s ones all separated from the rest. And just coming down to the end of this roll now, there is so much good stuff in here, guys. What is this? 34 Denver, very nice. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to check that one as well. Here we go, we got a 46 right here. Got our pile of wheat pennies over here. And 57 right there. We got another wheat penny right here, 51 Denver, and a really nice shiny 1979. Guys, I think we might have had more wheat pennies in there than uh, anything else, really. And I missed this one, but that's a really nice 61 Denver right there. So what an awesome start, guys. So I'm gonna move these wheat pennies over to their own pile uh, of just the 50s. I'm gonna hold on to these coppers. We'll take a look at them a little bit later. But right now what I'm gonna do is take the placemat here, which uh, basically displays all the different types of coins that you could find in a penny roll uh, across the front side. Flip it over to the back side where we have these key date and low mintage lists, and we're gonna check these to see if any of the ones that we just found end up in that list. And right off the bat, I'm already seeing that 34 Denver is in that low mintage list, so below 50 million minted on the 34 Denver. We are also looking for the 21S, which is right there, so that's a nice sign. And uh, let's see what else we got over here. We do have, there's that 21S. So that is actually a low mintage. We got two low mintages off of the first roll. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at uh, this one right here. 1920, I don't think makes the list, but we'll just make absolute sure. Yeah, you'd need a mint mark on it to make the list, but this one does not have one. And then we also had a 37, which I happen to know is fairly common. You can see over here though, Basically, everything on this list is pre-40s except for the 55S, so that is why you wanna be on the lookout for that stuff. And then when you come up here to the key date, which is below 10 million, that stuff gets even older, so back to 33 and before, guys. I am hoping we can get something on this key date list. We've already got two low mintage pennies right here, which is super difficult to come by, and we've already got them out of the first roll. And we have nine more to go, guys. Let's go ahead and get into the second one. The second roll we're gonna be taking a look at is the one marked 1944, same North Jersey National Bank uh, style there. And it does have some tape on the end, so we'll have to be a little bit careful trying to peel that off because we don't want to uh, disturb the roll. This, this tape is not, uh, doesn't look like it's gonna come off as nicely, but we'll just be as gentle as we can here. Um, but that is sort of what happens when people put tape on rolls or bills for that matter I've, I've seen people put tape on bills as well, which is kind of annoying uh, It definitely takes some of the value off when you try to get it off But anyways, I think we got just about as much as we need to get that roll open That tape is all over my fingers now, and I think we're gonna be able to get into her now All right guys hoping for an Indian head scent here or anything key date that would uh, definitely be a nice thing to find. So let's go ahead and push them out and see what we can get. I'll go ahead and zoom in here for you so you can see what's coming out here. 
And the big reveal. Oh, right off the bat, we got Wheat Penny. Oh my gosh, are we gonna get something, some old uh, foreign coins again as well? That was a pretty cool sight to see out of that last roll. That is another one of the really cool things about these particular rolls. They have a lot of really cool old foreign coins. All right, let's take a look. So we got, uh, looks like three Lincoln Memorials right off the bat, but then we're getting into some Wheat Pennies here with the 56, a 55 Denver, four in a row, that must be a new record, 56 and 57D. So those are all pretty common. We'll keep on moving here. A whole bunch of uh, Lincoln Memorials. There's a 45, also very common. And 75. Okay, so not as many in this roll, at least so far. But uh, we, I, I can see quite a few more on the horizon, so we will keep moving here through these rolls. There, that one's pretty close. That is a 41 Denver right there. Let's move these into view for you. So we got a Wheat Penny here. It looks like we're going to have three in a row. 57D, 45 and a 58, just a baby on that one. Here we go with a 57D. This one's got a bit of toning to it. And oh, very nice, look at that. 1955, there's actually a very well-known uh, variety to look for on this one, and it would be the 55 double die, but I can tell you right off the bat, we do not have it on this one. It would be very obvious uh, if we did. And that that would be uh, a very nice coin to find. That Those sell for quite a bit. Uh, over here, though, we have more wheats coming out, and this one, okay. I thought that might be an older one, although I was kind of thinking, is that a 48? No, it's a 1918, guys, with an S mint mark, of course. Okay, let's take a look here. Is that going to make our key date list? Unfortunately, no. We go from 15S all the way up to 22, nothing in between, but... Let's take a look down here at low mintage because I have a feeling this could make the list. So low mintage, are we gonna see the 18S? Yes, we are, look at that guys. Right there, 1918S. That is another low mintage coin on the second roll. Unbelievable. All right, let's keep moving because we got a whole bunch more coins to go through here. Let's see what else is gonna be in the end of this roll. So we had another wheat penny come out right there, 57. Really shiny looking 72 right there. I'll put that over with the rest of them. There's a 58. Here's 51 Denver, another 51 Denver. And what do we have here? That looks like 19, oh, 1935 Denver. Very nice. Let's take a look at the list here, see if that one's gonna show up for us. And look at that, guys. Another low mintage coin. So we have two low mintage coins per roll in the last two rolls so far. 1935 Denver, oh my gosh, guys, if I could use this in the CoinQuest series, I certainly would, because we'd be filling holes left and right in our collection book. Okay, guys, so we just got a little bit more to go through in this last, uh, in this second roll here. Oh, come on, are you kidding me? Right under that 41, we have another pre-40s Wheat Penny right there. Oh my gosh, look at that, 24S. I love those San Francisco mint marks. Now let's take a look. I'm going to check the key date list first. We see the 24 Denver there and no 24S. How about low mintage? And there it is, guys. Our third low mintage coin on the roll. That is so, so cool. 24S. This one's actually in really good shape as well. Yeah, look at that. You can still see some of the stalks on the wheat ears on the back of that coin. Unbelievable. Let's put that next to the rest of them. And just a few more coins over here to go through in the final uh, stages of this roll. Okay, so most of them were Lincoln Memorials, but we do have one more Wheat Penny to take a look at here. And it's going to be a 56. All right, guys, with that being said, let's get down to roll number three. All right, here we go. Roll number three is marked 1952 Denver. And this one actually doesn't have any tape on it, so that's uh, it's a little bit nicer to get into. All right, let's zoom in here. The big reveal once again. I see wheat pennies, no doubt about it. I'm also seeing a good amount of Lincoln Memorials in this one. Haven't seen anything looking super old yet, but it's hard to say at this point. All right, let's take a look, guys. So second coin in happens to be a wheat penny. That's a 57 Denver. There's a 51, uh, looks like Denver there. This could be older. Oh, wait a minute. 1920S, very nice. Let's check the list here. Once again, you guys know what it is. Low mintage 
And there it is, 1920S. So that is the first on this roll. And if we keep the pattern up, there should be more to come. So let's take a look, guys. Here's another Wheat Penny here. That's a 51 Denver. That's common. 52 Denver's common as well. Let's keep on moving here. See what else we can find. 57. Okay. That is exactly what I was hoping for. And we got it on roll number three. Look at that, guys. It's been so long since I have seen that. I don't know how I missed it when we opened the roll. Oh my gosh, and it came out reverse up, and look at that! Look right there! Ah, oh, okay, let's take a look, guys. This is what you call an Indian head penny. 1909 was the last year that these coins were made. This is going to be very, very interesting to see what the year is on this one. So let's take a look at this, guys, and do the ultimate reveal. What is the date going to be? Three, two, one. Oh, there we go, guys. We broke the 1900s. That one is 1897. How cool is that? Now, obviously not in the best condition in the world. It has quite a bit of corrosion. You can see that green uh, up on the upper left-hand side. But 1897, well over 100 years old. And it's just amazing that we were able to find that in a circulated roll. Oh my gosh, guys, I hope there's more of these to come because I will never get over the feeling of finding an Indian head penny. It's gonna be hard to put this one down, but we gotta do it because there's more coins to be found. Let's keep moving here and take a look at this one right here. This kind of looks like it's been cleaned. Uh, maybe some artificial toning, I don't know. It definitely looks different than the rest though. And look at that, 1936. Yeah, I think that, 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 that coin looks like it's taken an acid bath. So I'm gonna say probably not natural, not natural on that one but here we go we got a couple of uh wheat pennies right there it's a 55d we're on the lookout for that 55s though that uh could get us a low mintage coin now this one right here that definitely looks older let's flip that over to see what we got yeah there we go guys 1929s and let's take a look once again at the list here we haven't been able to find a key date yet uh, and I don't think we got it this time either, but how about another low mintage? I will definitely take that. Oh no, it doesn't make the list, 29D. But hey, 29S, I can't complain about that. It's a nice looking coin as well. All right, let's keep moving here, see what else we can get. So I'm seeing lots of Lincolns there. What is this? Oh, that's old guys, 1918. And I can tell you for a fact, that's not gonna make the list. Basically anything without a mint mark. Uh, does not make those lists as much as the mint marks do. However, that is a nice older find right there, well over 100 years old once again. And let's keep moving here. We got a 51 Denver. A, what is that? 32, huh? Definitely don't see that. Oh, well, there's why, guys. Look at this. That's a key date coin right there. And I was going to say, I don't see 32s like ever. Oh my gosh, and look at that. It's got nice toning on it as well. I can't say if it's if it's natural or artificial though. I'm not the best at uh, identifying that. But you definitely have some nice toning right there. And that is a coin that I don't think I have ever found in any capacity, whether it be metal detecting or coin roll hunting. That is a beautiful find. Nice toning on it. Let's take a look at the reverse. Wow. Yeah, that is what we like to see, guys. 1932. That is our first key date, our first key date in a while, actually. Uh, I think that I had a 23S was the only one that I found out in the wild, and it has been a long time since then. Whoa, look at that, guys. This is actually another thing that I've never been able to find before, but I have seen people find them in the past. That is a little uh, silhouette of Kennedy there facing Lincoln, and I don't remember exactly why this was done, but it was done a while ago, and I think it was because there's so many eerie similarities between Lincoln and Kennedy, and they decided to put a stamp of him up there uh, on the Lincoln penny. I'm definitely going to hold on to that one because I do not see those very often. I see people find them all the time, but that's my first, so that's really cool. Here we go. We got another really old one right there. 1916 is the year on that one, and we'll definitely be putting that over with the other ones, although it does not make the low mintage list. And then we got a couple more over here, 56 and a 57 to finish off the roll, guys. We are just on roll number three. Let's go ahead and get into roll number four. All right, so roll number four also happens to be marked with 1952 Denver, so just like the last roll, so maybe we'll be getting another uh, 
Indian head penny out of here? I don't know, that would be pretty nice. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and take a look at what we can get. Maybe we'll actually be able to capture it this time because somehow we totally missed uh, that Indian. Oh, is that a 1920 right there? That's pretty sweet. There's another uh, older looking wheat penny right, what the, what the heck? Is that a square coin? Yeah, we got some interesting stuff coming out here, guys. I'm gonna have to, that, that, that kind of stopped me in my tracks right there. So what do we have? Oh my gosh, okay, so Government of India. It's a square coin, it's also hold. I don't think it's supposed to be hold. Somebody put that there. And that right there is a half Anna from 1954. What in the world? That is super, super cool, guys. I did a April Fool's prank like five years ago where I found, I found a square coin, but I've never actually found one for real. I think that's the first. You basically have to find them in customer app rolls because they wouldn't let that through the bank. That is unbelievable. All right, so uh, I guess that's our second uh, foreign coin. I'm seeing some really good stuff here, guys. Let me make sure you can see. This right here, I was gonna say, this looks old. Oh my gosh, I can't even get the whole roll open. So that is that is probably cleaned as well. 1917 on that one, but I could tell it was, it was old just based off the way it looked. A lot of times I find really old wheat pennies coming out all clean like that. But anyways, guys, let's keep looking here. We have another one right here that looks just extremely slick. Let's take a look at this one, see what the date's gonna be. Um, that 1928 Denver, oh my gosh, we keep getting these with the mint marks and everything. <sighs> this is gonna, yeah, I, I already knew. Low mintage is gonna make the list, of course. 1928 Denver right there. What else can you say? Of course it's gonna make the list. I mean, every single old coin out of here that has a mint mark basically does. All right, so that's like our seventh or eighth one, not to mention that key date that came out a little bit earlier. Let's see what else we can get out of here. Ooh, that's a really shiny 1960s coin right there. All right, guys, at this point, I feel like I'm gonna have to go a little bit faster because this is getting to be kind of a long video at this point uh, with all these really awesome finds coming out. That is a beautiful 62. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through these coins. I'll stop when I find something pre-40s, but other than that, I'm just gonna keep moving. So you'll see a time lapse and we'll stop on the next really good coin. And of course, we're gonna have to just stop right away, guys. Look at this, 1930 San Francisco. Oh my gosh, okay, let's see. What do you think, low mintage? Of course, why not? 1930S right there in the low mintage range. And look at that, guys. We just got another uh, foreign coin which was hiding underneath a penny. This one's actually a little bit newer. Something I have not seen before. Very nice and shiny. Trinidad and Tobago, one cent from 1973. Look at how shiny that is. That's a very cool design right there. Love the luster on it. It's almost proof-like. You wouldn't see something like that in the US uh, out there for regular circulation. And basically right away, guys, we have another one coming out here. 1935 Denver, I already checked. That does make the low mintage list, of course. So we'll just go ahead and add it to the next, add it to the rest of them and keep moving. There we go with another one, guys. Okay, let's take a look. 1917S, of course. And does that make the list? Well, yes it does, 1917S right there. We could basically fill out an entire collection just based on these 10 rolls. All right guys, coming down to the end of this one, and this is where I was seeing some really old looking stuff, and it looks like that is uh, precisely what's gonna be happening over here. We have a 1930 San Francisco right there. I think we even found one of those earlier. That does, of course, make the low mintage list. Uh, I do see the 1920 right there. Let's see what else we have first though. It looks like we do have more uh, pre 40s coins 1937s right there of course that one makes the list as well so it looks like we're just picking up steam i thought it was going to kind of be consistent no we are picking up steam as we go through these rolls 53 denver right there is just going to be common here is that 1920 though that we saw earlier and it does look like it's going to have an estimate mark on it as well which does put it of course into that low mintage below 50 million minted range unbelievable this is like, you could go a lifetime of coin roll hunting regular rolls and, and, and still have a hard time accumulating this amount of low mintage stuff. We've done that in just four rolls. Who knows what else is in here? All right guys, on to roll number five now. This one is marked 1956 Denver. Let's zoom in here for the reveal. 
See if we're gonna catch anything popping out. I have to imagine these coins haven't been opened in over 40 years. You know, oh, what is that? What the heck is that? That's a wheat penny? Okay, I guess so. Looks like a 30s or something. We'll come back to that in a second. I thought we might have another uh, Indian head uh, penny right there. Maybe even a flying eagle. Can you imagine? All right, let's keep uh, keep dumping them here. Ooh, what? What the? Is this a proof, guys? Oh my gosh. I think we just found a proof wheat penny. I've never seen a, well, I've seen them. I've never seen them come out of a roll though. Unless this is play, I don't know. Look at the edge, that's gotta be a proof. Huh. All right, so that is a first for Quinn's Coins. I guess let's flip this over and see what the year is. Three, two, one. Okay, 1957 is the year on that one. How amazing is that coin right there, guys. I have never found a proof wheat penny before, but that is my first, and I am super stoked about it. You could tell right away. Oh my gosh. That thing's almost perfect. It's got a few scratches on the face. I'm using the gloves hand so that I don't put any fingerprints on it or anything like that. How unbelievable is that? Definitely wasn't expecting that because in the whole box that we had last time, there was nothing like it. That is amazing. All right, let's keep moving here and see what else we can find. Okay, guys, this is... Uh... <laughs> I'm not sure where to go from here. I'm pretty sure this is one of the absolute rarest uh, pennies that you can possibly find, and we just got it. It's a 1931 Denver. Now that I think about it, it might be the 31S, but I, have, I haven't even found anything close to this. You can see right here, it's on the key date list right there, 1931 Denver, 31S is on there as well. And we just got one. So that's, I think that's definitely something worth stopping for. That's uh, really amazing. And it's also in absolutely beautiful shape. This could actually be a, fairly high dollar coin if it is what I think it is. I think we're gonna to need to check the book on that one. We know it's under 10 million minted, which definitely puts it in a very rare class, especially in this condition. And it looks like, I don't know if that, oh, I think that's just damage on the side there. I thought it might have been a cud. But uh, just unbelievable, guys. We've actually found three other low mintage coins uh, in this roll along with that one. So we'll be taking a look at those in a second. But uh, just finishing up this roll right now, uh, so let me just get through the rest of these here and see what else comes out. I see some 50s. There's a 54, 45, 57. These are all pretty common here. All right, so I'll push those over to the pile. We got three low mintages here. So we'll take a look at those real quick before moving on to the next. We got a 1916S. That really uh, beat up one that we saw earlier, which I thought was a wheat penny for a second. It's a 1920 Denver. So that does make the... Uh, low mintage range and then a 1926 Denver as well. Just awesome stuff here guys. We're not even halfway through Let's just keep moving and see what other surprises come out. All right, so we're on to the red rolls now So we have five brown rolls five red rolls and all the red rolls have dates on them that are uh, after the uh, Wheat penny range so 1964 uh, The last wheat penny that was made was in 1958. I wonder if these rolls are gonna be any different I guess we'll find out here so let's take a look. Eh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, I'm seeing wheat pennies already. Let's see what else we can see. Lots of wheat pennies there, all kind of next to each other. What do we have here? Uh, it's it's a Lincoln of some sort. I'm not sure if it's wheat or memorial. And I think that is it. So let's uh, take a quick look at these. I didn't see anything super crazy pop out yet, but I'm sure there's gonna be lots of good dates here. Let's take a look. All right, so surprisingly on that roll, not too many low mintages, no key dates or anything like that. We did get that 1911, and uh, we also got this one, which is extremely nice. 1959 Denver, the first year of the Lincoln Memorials. Very, very nice shape on that one. We'll definitely be putting that to the side. I think that might be even better than some of the other ones we found. So we will go ahead and get into roll number six now. Let's uh, take a look over here. So this one is marked 1967. 
I, I don't think that the markings on these actually have any significance whatsoever because this is clearly not how the rolls have uh, been packaged by the elderly gentleman who turned these into the bank. Um, I don't know what the significance of the uh, markings are, but we'll go ahead and get into this one now. See what uh, we, we're gonna get out of this 1967 roll. Okay, so make sure we're on focus here. Okay, yeah, I don't think that these red ones have not been producing as many uh, wheat pennies as the other ones, and certainly not as many quality wheat pennies, but there's still lots of wheat pennies in here, and they're all copper. And there, okay, what do we have here? 1951, but this right here is definitely what caught my eye. Once again, a really nice early 60s coin. Oh man, that is awesome. All right, guys, so we'll get through the rest of this one here, see if anything else is gonna pop out for us, and uh, if it does, I'll let you know. All right, so a couple coins of significance out of that roll. We got a 25S, that's gonna be a low mintage. Pretty nice looking coin as well. Actually, very nice if you look at that reverse. Wow, yeah, really nice on that one. And then we also got a fairly old one, but very beat up and uh, not low mintage or anything, but it is 1913. It's got some sharp edges on it. You can see it's, yeah, it's it's seen better days, no doubt about it. But that's a nice older one right there, guys. We got three more rolls to go. Let's see what else we can find. All right, here we go. 1971 is what this roll reads anyway. I'm sure that it's not full of 1971s, but all right, let's take a look. 1971, here we go. Ooh, we got some interesting coins right off the bat. I see some older, looks like some older wheat. Um, reverse there. And uh, there's a wheat penny right on the end, very nice. All right guys, we'll go through this one, see what we can find. Wow, look at that. Very nice right there. 1955, just about looking as good as those 50, that 59 and the 60 that we found earlier. How often do you see a wheat penny that looks like that? Now, it doesn't quite match up to the proof, but it's a very nice business strike coin right there. That is gonna have to be in its own pile. I don't know how many different piles I'm gonna come up with out of this particular batch of coins. What the heck is that, 46, I think? But yeah, guys, we have a lot of really great stuff coming out. You already know that. There's a really nice 1960. Another wheat penny with some luster on it. Let's take a look at that one. So right here we have a 52 Denver with some luster left on it, unbelievable. And I think that's about it for this roll. Now there was one other find here that I wanna show you. Uh, ended up being a low mintage, really nice condition, 1921 San Francisco, flip it over to the reverse and boom. You see those nice wheat ears, everything is looking great on that coin. This is a little bit overwhelming, I have to be honest with you guys. These are some really nice rolls. All right, here we go, guys. Roll number nine of 10, it says 1974 on it. Like we said earlier, though, that doesn't really seem like it's uh, any significance to what's gonna come out of the rolls. So let's see what we got. Okay, what do we have here? No way. Guys, we got silver, are you kidding me? One dime, look at that. All right, that is super sweet, guys. I've never found anything like this uh, in a penny roll. I've found silver in a dime roll, but you definitely don't expect to see this in a penny roll. And actually, I take that back. We did have this happen one other time where we found a uh, barber dime. It looks like this is gonna be a barber dime uh, in a penny roll. And I think actually we do have a mint mark down there uh, below the wreath, so I actually don't know because I'm not super well versed in barber dimes versus seated dimes, uh, and I know that they both have about the similar reverse. That is super cool, guys. I am super excited to see what this is gonna be, if it's gonna be a barber or a seated. Here we go, we're gonna flip this over. One of the best date reveals by far, I think, on the channel, three, two, one. Okay, yes, it is a barber. 1914 is the year on that. Unbelievable, guys. Why would anyone put this in a penny roll? It just boggles my mind. I don't understand, but that is an awesome thing to see come out, and that is why we do these close-ups, because you never know what's gonna come out of these type of rolls. All right, guys, I literally cannot decide what is my favorite find so far. We've got so much good stuff 
Let's keep moving through the rest of the roll, see if anything else is gonna pop out. Of course, three wheat pennies, four wheat pennies even in a, in a row there. And let's see what else is gonna come out. Do we have another silver in here? I wouldn't complain. Let's keep, uh, keep this on so you guys can see it. All right, I think that's gonna be about it. Oh, there's one more stubborn coin. It looks like it's gonna be a wheat penny. All right, guys, I will go through these because I don't see anything else super crazy and I'll let you know if I find anything else. All right, guys, nothing else too crazy out of that last roll other than this 1914. It would have been nice to get the 1914D. Uh, that's a very nice date, but this one doesn't have a mint mark no matter how much I tried to find it. Uh, but anyways, that brings us to our last roll, so kind of bittersweet. I don't know what's going to come out of this uh, final roll. Maybe it'll be just the grand finale, although I don't think it, uh, you're going to be able to beat that uh, Barber Dime. So here's our final roll. It's marked 1977. There's actually a wheat penny right on the end. It's a uh, 1940-something, so nothing crazy, but let's uh, dump her out and see what's going to come out here right at the end. So final roll. I definitely had a lot of fun with this. And uh, once again, thank you so much to David. There's another really nice looking 1960s right there. What is that? That, oh, okay, I, I thought that was, uh, was foreign or something for a second there. I'm seeing a lot of really nice, uh, probably early 60s, maybe 50s coins coming out. And that is going to be our final roll. So let's take a look and see what there is to find. And of course, guys, look at that. A second Indian head coming out right at the end. <sighs> okay, that is pretty unbelievable right there. So first, let's uh, remove all of these wheat pennies out of the way. I got a nice 1962 right there, 54, 49, and there's a 42. Okay, guys, look at that. Two Indian head pennies. There might even be more. And once again, I don't know how we missed it. They are pretty uh, pretty hard to miss. You can see they're, they're very different than the rest of the coins in the roll. Oh, that is just beautiful. This is much better condition than the last one. All right, let's flip this over, guys. See what we got for a year. Three, two, one. And there we go. So it's a 1902. The 1900s are a lot more common than the 1800s, so that would kind of uh, explain why it looked so nice. 1902 Indian head penny with an 1897 Indian head penny, as well as a silver barber dime. So much stuff came out of here, guys. We'll have to do a wrap up, but I can literally only show you the absolute best because there's just too much to show otherwise. All right, we'll put that one to the side for now and see what else we can find in our final roll. All right, guys, so that final roll did yield two more low mintage coins. We got a 1935S. And then actually kind of a rare occurrence, this one doesn't have a mint mark, 1921 Philadelphia, but it does make that low mintage list. So that's kind of interesting. It's not in the best of shape, but it's still pretty cool. Guys, we're gonna go ahead and get into a wrap up now and I'm gonna show you the best finds out of this awesome hunt. All right guys, welcome to the wrap up. I had a really difficult time choosing uh, the best coins out of today's hunt, but here's the best I could do. So starting up here with the foreign coins, we got three really nice ones, including a square one with a hole in it. Uh, we got this really cool coin right here that has uh, Kennedy facing Lincoln, which is kind of cool. I have not found one of those before. Uh, another thing that I haven't found before is a proof wheat penny, which is what we have right here. You can see that really nice luster and finish on that coin. Just amazing right there. We have a couple of really nice business strikes as well. So coming down here, we have a 1955. And uh, you can see that's just beautiful coin right there in really nice shape. This one a little bit, uh, not as great, but also pretty nice, 1952. We have two key date coins right here. So 1932 and then the 31D. And I did check the book, guys. I was correct. The 31S is definitely the one that you want to be on the lookout for uh, even more. But we will take a look over here because I want to show you this. So 1931S you see is under a million minted right there, 866,000. Even in good four condition, it's a $60 coin. 31D on the other hand has 4.4 million, but in good condition, it's worth $5. Now that is a really nice return on investment for a penny, if you think about it. Uh, 32, not so much. It was at 9 million minted, and that one's only worth about a buck 50. But still pretty good return on investment for a couple of key date coins right there. 
Now coming down to some of my favorite coins of the hunt. Of course, you cannot pass up an Indian head cent, but how about two guys? Two Indian head pennies in 10 rolls. How unbelievable is that? Not to mention, probably one of the coolest coins, although I cannot say for sure because there was so much good stuff today. We got a barber dime in a penny roll. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, what a, it's like a really crusty edge right there, but it does look pretty good. One dime, 1914, that is awesome, guys. So uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and really quickly show you uh, the aftermath here. So these are all of the really nice um, coins that we found in the 60s and 70s. Up here is all of our common wheat scents. These are our low mintage, and then these were the pre-40s that did not make that low mintage list. Look at all of that, guys. And then our discards over here, basically nothing. <laughs> Everything pretty much coming out of these rolls was amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I certainly did. But anyways, guys, that's going to pretty much do it for this one. Huge thanks to David once again for sending these rolls my way. I'm really hoping that Kevin and I can get into that box that you sent a little bit earlier as soon as we can. Of course, as always, if you're interested in picking up the coin roll hunting placemat that I used throughout today's hunt, you can head on over to my website at quinscoins.com. I also have nickel and silver stacking placemats up there for you as well. And they have these nice lists on the back that show you key date and low mintage coins in case you're not sure about something that you find. Also, if you're interested in picking up one of these Quinn's Coins hats, I have those up for sale on the website as well. Once again, that's quinzcoins.com, and I'll put a link down in the description below. Well, guys, that's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week, always bringing you along with the hunts and having a good time. And as always, I'm Quinn, and this is Quinn's Coins signing out, and I will see you in the next one.